Uh, my name is Shane Balkowicz. My passion is wet plate clothing photography, which dates back to the 1850s. Uh, Frederick Scott Archer invented this process and um, essentially gave it to the world. He never, he didn't patent this or make any money from this and he died a, a poor man. Um, so there's this uh, photographic process that he invented himself and it changed the world. Um, for the first time, um, people were able to get their portraits taken um, in a much simpler way than in the, the previous ways. And um, I just continue to try to um, promote this and let people know that it's, it's still a valid medium. Um, analog photography is not dead, it's alive and well here in 2019. And um, I just hope I can prove that. History inspires me, capturing things. Um, I'm an oncology nurse by trade, so um, I've held the hands of many, many people as they left this world. And uh, I think it's that perspective that makes me want to leave something behind, some proof of my existence, that, um, that I was here. And that's an important thing for me because this wet plate uh, process, uh, these plates are pure silver on glass and, and unbroken. They'll be here for hundreds and hundreds of years from now. So there's, um, it's like a permanent record proof that I was here. I saw a photograph online and uh, something about that photograph um, caught my eye. It, it wasn't, it was of a motorcycle. I went back and found the photograph that, that, that prompted me to ask the photographer, what was that? I, I saw him uh, with the chemicals and stuff and it wasn't, that wasn't that, you know, I didn't understand that, what he was doing with those bottles and stuff. So, um, but he explained to me, he said it was wet plate. So I, I got online and, and uh, I went back to him and I said, well, I would just love to do that. And um, he had asked me, um, are you a photographer? I said, well, I don't own a camera. And he was a very nice guy, his name was Paul. He said, well, um, you know, I can't imagine a non-photographer figuring out this process. I've been a photographer for 20 years and it's difficult for me. And within 45 days of that conversation, I had had this camera built for me, had gotten all my trays, gotten my glass, gotten all my chemicals together, and did a bunch of studying and a bunch of studying and um, went for my first exposure on October 4, 2012. Yeah, my brother Chad. What inspired you to take pictures of him in the first place? Just, he's just fucking standing around, you know. Um, that there's a, in that that first uh, photograph of my brother on October 4, 2012. That was plate number one. Um, has inspired this little series that I'm putting together. So on October 4th every year, my brother comes into my studio no matter what he's doing, and I capture him again on the, with this camera, um, with his shirt off, with a black background, the same kind of pose, and, and he's just looking at the camera. And um, so now I've been doing this for six years, so I actually have seven plates of my brother showing this progression of his aging. I could use other people's talents to improve my own work. And we can collaborate and I can ask them to do what they'd expert, they're experts at. Jason Luter, he's, my, he's the official carpenter of my studio. He, if it has to do with wood, it's done. Jason will get in wood. He's building a throne for Throne of the Gods July 20th. I mean, he's building a throne for Zeus to sit on. Um, you know, Michelle uh, Oster Renner, she's, she's, my, she's doing all the costumes. I mean, she spends hours and hours putting these costumes together for these large collaborations. I've got all my makeup crew that's also there and all the people that's going to help us on set. Um, we've got people building the clouds and, and, and yeah. things like that. So Reese is putting clouds together on, on chicken wire and, and framing and making these clouds so that we can set at the foot of Zeus and his 12 gods. Um, I mean, these are, uh, it's amazing creating with people. And then I have my director, Merrick, your, your instructor. He's my, you know, he, he's my director. So I, I, I get to just even leave that out. I mean, I'd like to hand it to Merrick and say, Merrick, do your thing, you have your job, I have my job. I have my job with the camera and the chemicals and getting the exposure right and, and all of that, the composition is freaking difficult enough. And these big collaborations when you have 50 people and you've been spending eight months preparing for this and you only have, I'm only gonna take about eight plates to the, to the capital grounds, eight plates. Now, if I told you to grab your camera, you were gonna cover some large event, but you only get eight pictures. 
You know how silly that is? But that's what I'm up against. So there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of thoughtfulness, and we look at, we, we do everything we can to get that in outside, it'll be about a two second exposure. We'll do everything we can for that 1001, 1002. We got it. We may not get it. I only got eight shots at it on that day. So um, these are challenges, you know what I mean? These are challenges and, and, and the team, and as a team, as collaborators, you become a team. Uh, we have met that challenge every fucking time it's come in front of us, these crazy ideas. You know, we've been murderous gulch. We've been on the, ra you know, we've been on the raft of the Medusa, um, you know, the, which we call the capsizing of humanity. We liberty leading the people, which I stood in front of in the Louvre just a month ago. Um, you know, um, we, we were able to recreate that. So these are, um, these are things that we always, we, we tend to take on something really big, but when we all come together and everyone does their job, um, um, it works out. It works out. The lesson that I, um, I take from this and, and what I'm kind of um, in awe at is the people that are brought into my life by this process that um, I didn't have any ideas when I was taking that picture of my brother that anyone in this world would be interested in what I was doing at that time. Um, and, and I didn't know anyone. I didn't, I didn't know any Native Americans. I mean, I'm, on, I'm making Northern Plains and Native Americans a modern wet plate perspective. The first book just came out. And um, I didn't know any Native Americans at the time. I didn't know you. I didn't know all the students that come in. So all these people have been brought to me for no other reason than this process. This process draws people here. It's interesting. And then um, these relationships form um, with these people that I would never have in my life. So it's an important, um, you know, I love that about this is that the, the, the talent and the, the beautiful people that are brought into, into my life um, by just me doing what I'm doing here. Um, that's, that's the lesson that I've kind of taken away from this is that um, if, you, if you do something with good intent, um, your heart's open, you're open to collaborating with people, um, and you want to surround yourself with good people, um, it's, it's a, it can be a wonderful thing. These um, plates aren't snapshots, okay? They're, they're essentially, again, looking romantically and nostalgic at this, um, they are 10 to 12 second movies, still life movies that are there. So the, I know as a nurse that their heart's gonna beat six to eight times during that exposure. They're gonna take a couple shallow breaths. And all of that is, is transmitted to the plate. It's all there. And, and you can never, and what's really wonderful about the process is you can never, um, you can never duplicate it. So once you, you live that, you experience that 10, 12 seconds of exposure, that is gone. And even I've tried, I've dropped the plate on the floor and, and, and tried to sit the sitter down and try to capture the same thing that's broken in those shards on the ground. And there's no getting to it. I can sit down, haven't even moved the camera. You sit in the same chair. I do the same exposure. We got the same lights. And I can't get back to eight minutes ago. I can't get back to 15 minutes ago. And um, that's what I love. That's what I love. Because how many times in your life do you just spend 10 seconds doing something like combing your hair or brushing your teeth? <coughs> These are moments of our lives that have no significance. I want people that sit in front of my camera that 10 seconds. So brush your teeth one last time and come into my studio and let me really capture an important 10 to 12 seconds for you. You only have so many 10 to 12 seconds in your lives. And as, an, as a nurse, like I explained, I, I, I'm aware of that. I'm 50 years old. Um, I vision myself, my house is about 75 yards up the hill. I vision myself walking down this hill when I'm 70, 80 years old, God bless, um, you know, God willing, and um, come down here and creating. But I only have so much time left. So there's only a finite, <coughs> excuse me, amount of time that we all have on this earth. So we have to ask ourselves, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to be remembered? Is that important to you? And if you do want to be remembered, I want to be remembered. It's not a vanity thing. It's just, uh, I, I think our lives, all of our lives, and my, not my life, your life, everyone's life has, has something to give. It's a story to tell. It's your life. What are you going to do with it? What do you want people to know about you? Do something. Do something that's important. Do something that's important to you. Do something that's important for the community. Do something that's important for someone else. 
I mean, is that not how we how we can live on? Isn't that not how we can build these legacies and 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 try to change this world? If we all looked out for each other, if we all thought thoughtfully and with intent, good intent, to try to do something nice for each other, um, isn't that what it's about? I mean, nobody's on their deathbed, and I've been at plenty of deathbeds. There's nobody's on their deathbed saying, "Well, I wish I could have." You know, worked one more day, or I wish I could have mowed the lawn again, or oh, I darn it, I didn't get to brush my teeth that last time. Going back to my 10-second thing, um, you know, nobody says those things. What they do is they bring their family members in, and, and their family members they want to spend those next couple of minutes, their last couple of minutes, with the people that are around them, the people that love them, and um, but that's great. But you could have spent 30 years of that. You could have had 30 years of those moments with those people. Do you know what I'm saying? They, you, could have, you could have been spending that time. Why does it have to always be at the end that we value our time? Why does it always have to be at the end that we, we realize that this is it? And then you, I want to lay on my bed when I'm gone or when I'm leaving, and I want to, um, I want to think that I did something. You know, I don't want to have regrets. And I never had an, an artistic outlet like this. I was a businessman. I chased money. Money, that's what I was, that was my goal in life, was money. I, I, it was just a naive, stupid pursuit. But it's all I knew. You know, I went to business school, and I started my own business. And I knew it was feeding my family, and I was able to be my own boss. I mean, these are all wonderful, wonderful things. But do, do you think that money and everything, uh, if that, th th I can't take it with me. Is that important at the end of the day? It's not, it's not, it's these relationships, this conversation I'm having with you, these are the things that are important. Um, you know, chasing money is, um, it's, it's not where it's at. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, money can make your life very comfortable, but it's, it's, it can't be the end game. It can't be the end game. And I, and I found out on my own way, I, I found out on my own that, that I was so, when I found this camera, I found out how, um, my pursuit, how bad my pursuit was, and that now I have something that has meaning. What I do here with my camera is so much more important than I do in my business life. Um, it's so much more important. I want to be remembered. Um, I want to be remembered in my work. I want people to um, see my work after I'm gone. Um, know it's me and know that what, I, what, what it was I was doing and, and all I was trying to do was share. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm all just, I'm just trying to share the process. I'm trying to, you know, I, I've given, I've made 3,200 plates or something in the last six years. I've given over 2,000 of those away um, as gifts. Here? They're out there in the world. Um, that's where I like them, you know what I mean? Um, art isn't meant to be put away and not looked at. Um, you know, we should appreciate it while we're here, you know. Um, we should appreciate it while it's we're here. So um, I right? got some pieces of art here, historic pieces That's of art that people have said, well, you should have that. You know, it shouldn't be in the sun or on the wall, and it should be in a box or something, you know, archived. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm sharing this with, with people that come in. So um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure why. And, and maybe, it, and I keep going back to it, and maybe it is the oncology thing. Maybe it is the, the death and dying process. Maybe it's that what makes me want to leave something behind. I hope it's not a vanity thing. It's not. I, I'm not doing this for a vanity thing. I'm, I'm, I, I want to. I want people to look at my images hundreds of years from now. Um, I, and I've told this story before, and I, maybe I told it to you as the students. But I have this this idea that a couple hundred years from now, two, three hundred years from now, long after you and I are gone, um, that maybe some first day archivist goes up in the historic site, the first day on the job, and, and um, goes back in the vault and just happens across one of my plates just happens to see one of my plays. It doesn't have to be a big exhibition, just, just a person, just, just this new archivist, this idea in my head of this student that just got out of school and just got this job, and they see one of my plates, and they look at my plate, and maybe they like it, maybe they don't, but they look at it, and they turn it over, and on the back they're gonna read the date, they're gonna know Bismarck, North Dakota, they're gonna know the person's name, every, every plate is named, so they're gonna know the person who's in the image, and they're gonna know my name. So if they say those things out loud, or if they even, in, in their mind, they read that the back of that plate, I think me and my sitter are alive again for just a split second. That our memory is taken 
two, three hundred years into the future, and um, we're alive again. And what, what more could you ask? You know, what more can you ask? It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It's just if someone can appreciate any of these plates um, after I'm gone, I mean, what more can you ask? I mean, what more do I want? Like, I don't want anything more.